Mine is a very long time ago. Not that long, I think um, two years back. It started two years back, but my depression started, I think, um, eight years back when I lost my um, elder brother, my immediate elder brother. So the whole family was like looking up to me as the younger one, although we are 18 number, but I was like the um, Somehow, let me say, the bright person and everyone likes me in the house and they're like looking up to me. My mom, my dad, everyone, they just like, I'm, I'm the loved one in the house. Everyone loved me and they were like looking up to me. And so I had advice from my mom, my dad to be a good boy. I was living a rough life, kind of saying, uh, like advice from my mom, my dad. Stay away from trouble, stay away from women, stay away from days where I was like, I was this stubborn type. I don't listen to people. I like doing what's in my mind. It's like, after all, what's in your life? Advice usually come that period of time, a lot of advice from my parents. Stay away from trouble and all that. Well, I, was, I was a stubborn type. So after all said and done, I lost my brother and everyone was looking up to me. I got this deadly disease. I was like, ah, I'll be very, very disappointed. My mom will be disappointed. My dad, the whole family will be disappointed in me. After everything, after all the advice, I still went back on this. So I could not share it with anybody. I could not share it even with my, my mom, my dad, the whole family. I was 20. So I could not share it with anyone now. I just kept it to myself. I was just dying in silence. So it was somehow bad because having something like that, not telling your mom, nobody to share it with, I was just dying in silence. And then this society came up. I was traveling to somewhere far, maybe drop a letter, a note with my mom, and said, she not cry, she just take it like that. I know I, I wronged them, I disappointed them. I'm supposed to come out with something big to take care of them at their old age, but it just have to happen this way. Drop the note and I just travel somewhere far, very far, and end it there. But something still, my, nobody advised me. Nobody talked to me. But something came in my mind that, like I should say the Holy Spirit. One, if you commit suicide, you're going to hell. I mean, killing yourself is not the best option. But I know I'm a Christian then, but I don't, I don't worship like that. I don't go. I just, my, just a Sunday tonic song. Just go to church every Sunday. But God can answer you that I, I smoke. I mean, in Niger Delta, you know, we are very rough there. I do so many things. Then I still walk in the water. I do bunkery. I do so many, so many things. I take drugs. I drink. I smoke. I do so many things. So there's no way God can answer me doing things like that. I don't serve Him the way I'm ought to. So I just decided that would be the best option, just to end it. But since that thing always hits me down in me that you can just surrender to God and live and watch if truly he can help. I was not that strong in church. It was still hitting on me. It was still hitting on me until a time I, I, I was invited by, for a church program by my mom. They usually have that program every Christmas period. My mom didn't notice but my dad noticed. They always ask me, what's the problem? I mean, you're going down. I said, no problem. My mom would always say, ah, he's a young man coming up, man. The stress, the struggle as a man trying to make it. And dad said, no. I mean, the son I know is supposed to come up big. I mean, usually gym before, what's the problem? I say, daddy, I just feel like stopping gym. I mean, I just, I'm okay like this. I could not share it with my friends. Because I feel when I share it to them, they will run far from me and 
people will be scared of me. So I actually just keep it to myself. I'll just die in silence. And all of a sudden, my mom said, wow, everybody's going for this program. What's the problem? Join us. And I said, I'm OK. Later on, I let her join them. It was OK. It, the program was OK. So then God came down. What I'm saying is that most people, before they commit suicide, they feel that they have nothing to live for again. They have nobody. But I believe you have somebody. If at all everybody left you, or everybody has lived in this life, God is still there. Nobody laid hand on me. Sorry to say. Sounds so funny, but nobody laid hand on me. I mean, the sickness I'm talking about is not malaria, I was HIV positive. So it was that deadly. I was almost dead. And I'm a jovial person. I I don't I don't keep secrets, but I was surprised I kept the secrets for some years. I didn't tell anybody. Because I felt opening it up to people, they were wrong far from me. The lesson I learned was that I gave everything up to God. I gave my life to Christ. I opened up to God. I think that was my best friend for them. Surprisingly, I went for baptism in church. I didn't still tell anybody in the church, but I went for baptism. I gave my life. I gave everything. Why did you tell anybody in church? I don't open up to people. I mean, things like us. I, I knew definitely if I open up to people, it will reach my mom. So I kept it to myself. I just opened up to God because He knew. After then, they said. You, like in the church, you'll say that if you have any problem before, now you gave your life to Christ, did baptism, you can go for tests and check. And I just obeyed. It's just like the message was coming to me. I went for tests. It was negative. I was a small, lovely boy. He stays with, um, I think, his auntie. He stays with his auntie and. He always play around my house, our neighbor's children, he come around, play with them. Although he was usually stubborn, he was a stubborn boy. And I always correct him. Whenever he does something wrong, I flog him, I correct. But usually when I do flog him, he was like thinking I hate him or something like that. But later on, I called him and I told him, I'm not flogging you because I hate you. I'm flogging you to correct you because of the kind of like you always do things that you're not ought to do. So don't think I hate you. So later on, he, li he now likes me. He sees me. He always like he greets me. And he, if he needs something, he always asks for me. For me, cross. I need this. I need that. If I have, I'll do gift to him. But there was a night I came back and I saw him outside and I asked, what is the problem? He said they always send him out of the house. He always feel pain that his auntie might treat him and all the rest. So I said, okay. I went upstairs to meet his auntie and I talked to her. I told her, this is a small boy, it's not the good thing you do to him is to advise him, talk to him, not to my treating, stuff like that. So after all said and done, it was on, um, I think on Monday morning or something like that. I was coming back home, I saw a crowd around the house. I was like, what was the problem? They say that that small boy hanged himself. I said, ah, no, 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 how will he hang himself? It's too small to think of something like that. I said, I should go there. I went there, I saw him hang himself, just picked up a rope like that, tied it in the staircase upstairs, put it in the neck and jumped down. And he said, I was like, ah, all oh, these small boys just think of something like this. The boy is now, it's not up to 15, just 13, 14. He was this playful type, he always liked playing ball, running about. But most times he keep to himself, he just, 
sit down in a lonely place. I mean, it's too small to be doing most things like that. Just sit down and you keep to yourself. So I felt he had something secretive about himself. He didn't open up to anybody. I felt bitter actually. I said maybe if I knew he can do this, I could have advised him on something or maybe talk to him or something, do more. I felt bad at least I could have advised him on something else to do, not to kill yourself. He was too smart to do something like that.